If you're like me and many other people in the world, you want to have a successful career that provides you unlimited opportunities. You most likely also have a LinkedIn profile, which is why you're watching this video and why you're curious about mistakes that you might be making on LinkedIn that are holding you back from great professional opportunities. I completely get it. And guess what? I've been in that situation too. But fortunately for you, I've spent tons of hours both working on my own LinkedIn profile and helping others to eliminate common mistakes that people are making. Honestly, the idea of LinkedIn is still relatively new, even though it launched in the early 2000s. I've literally never heard of professional tech programs that are focused on tech jobs and cybersecurity jobs actually mention LinkedIn. I've also never heard of college programs that are working on making your LinkedIn profiles look great. What a shame. This is a huge gap in helping people find employment and one that I'm happy to help people fix. I remember when I was first graduating from my bachelor's degree program, and I'm not sure that I even knew what LinkedIn was but I definitely know that my professors or my mentors never even mention LinkedIn. Typically when people graduate from any kind of program, you wanna either finish and go right into a job or take no longer than around a month or so to start getting experience and making money. That meant that I roughly had a month to apply and actually land a job. So I started applying the traditional way of submitting online applications and hoping that I would actually get an interview. Most of the jobs that I was applying to were also not where I lived, which also made it difficult to know which companies were in certain cities. Now you might be asking, well, how did I find the companies that were there? I literally searched on Google to find top companies in those cities where I wanted to live and looking at companies that I knew probably had a presence there. This wasted a ton of time and I didn't know anybody that worked at those companies to give me a referral. So I'm pretty sure my application went straight into the trash or the discard pile. I'm sure you can relate to that feeling. Anyways, it took a little more than a month to find a job. And frankly, I feel like I got lucky with that and made the move to Denver. I started to meet new people in the new city and I really didn't like that job after a while, but now I had some connections to help me get into a new job or a new company. One of my friends gave me a referral to Verizon Wireless, so I got a new job. I was so excited. I started to think about the situation and how beneficial it was to network when you're trying to find a job. But of course, I mainly discarded that feeling. Anyways, after a few years, I started the job search again, but just like before, I was going the traditional route of searching for jobs. I received rejection after rejection until I finally landed a job at a company where I didn't know anybody. After a while in this job, I realized that even though I started to build my experience in sales, that I wanted to switch career fields to cybersecurity. You might be asking, well, what's the problem? Well, my network was full of salespeople, but nobody was in IT or cybersecurity. So at that point, I'd have to start my network over again because I needed people who were actually in that career field to help me get a break. At this point, I began my master's program in information assurance and cybersecurity, and I began brainstorming how I could network with people. One of the best and easiest ways that I came up with was to engage on LinkedIn, but that meant that I actually had to make a profile. Keep in mind, this was well before I became the content creator that you see today. Over time, I've done every one of these mistakes that we're gonna cover, but I've also learned that a solid LinkedIn profile and presence can make all the difference in the world if you're trying to start a career or grow your career. And that includes finding jobs or other opportunities. So what are the mistakes that I learned to avoid? The first mistake that happens all too often is that you only allow people to connect with you if they know your email address. You might've seen this before where you try to connect with somebody and it asks for their email address to verify that you actually know them. Let me ask you a question. How are people that you've just started to interact with going to know your email address? Guess what? They're not. This setting creates an unnecessary barrier for you to interact with people and grow your network, but luckily you can turn it off. Sure, you can be selective with who you accept connection requests from, but LinkedIn is all about networking and growing your network. This isn't Facebook where you might share things that you don't want others to see. I'll leave a link in the description on how to disable this setting. The second mistake is that you're a likeaholic. Have you ever been on social media where you saw a post and you liked it? Then you saw another post and you liked that too. Then you saw another post and you also liked that, but you never contributed with a comment or any kind of response. That's what a likeaholic is. You just like posts and you never contribute back to it. Can I tell you a secret? That doesn't actually count as engagement. If I went on LinkedIn and I looked at your activity log for your profile, which anybody can do, and I see a bunch of likes, well, that's worthless. On LinkedIn, you should be asking questions, sharing information, and overall building relationships with your network. Let employers see that you make valuable contributions. It's just like if you were to go to meetings at work, would you just sit there? Or would you actually give input? Other people can see what you're saying, and if they like it, hopefully they'll want to connect with you too. All right, so I've pulled up my LinkedIn profile so I can show you this activity log. 
So if you go to your profile and you scroll down here, and there's this activity section. So if you do show all activity, this will show everything that you've done. Okay, so posts, articles, likes, all that stuff. And you can see like on this first one, I liked my comment and it showed that I liked my comment, right? So your activity log could just be full of these likes and have no actual posts. If I click on posts, this is gonna show what I've actually posted instead of just likes. So if we scroll down here, we can see all the different posts that I've made. Mistake number three is that you don't follow or connect with people that you've interacted with in the posts or comment section. Again, LinkedIn is all about growing your network and building professional relationships. If people comment on your stuff or they respond back to you, continue that relationship and grow it. You never know who's gonna become a manager or some position where that connection's valuable, even if it's not right now. What if you connected with somebody, built that relationship, and then they ended up helping you get a job through a referral or they hired you later? The fourth mistake is that your profile isn't search optimized. I'm not sure if you realize it, but basically everything in your profile can be searched for, especially if it's public information. Specifically, one of the areas that's underutilized on LinkedIn is the skills section. This is the one section where it's silly if you don't hit the max amount of skills that LinkedIn allows. Employers search on LinkedIn all the time for specific skills. So if you have them in your profile, you could come up in those search results. LinkedIn also now allows you to link skills to specific jobs, and I highly encourage you to do this. I'm telling you, being able to be found by employers is going to do nothing but help you. I guess unless you do questionable things, but this is a professional networking tool, so don't do questionable things. So if you're on your LinkedIn profile and you scroll towards the bottom, there's this skills section, and you can see currently as of this recording, 50 skills is the maximum that you can do, but when you enter in skills, it will ask you to tie it to jobs, certifications, or other things about your profile. The fifth mistake is that your profile is too generic and it doesn't reflect you. For starters, you better have a profile picture that's relatively professional. That doesn't mean that you have to have a professional headshot, but remember, employers might see this. Also, if you don't have a profile picture, then nobody reasonable is gonna connect with you because how do we know that you're not a bot? I don't connect with people who don't have a profile picture. That just seems lazy and I wanna know who I'm actually connecting with. You should also have a personalized profile banner image at the top of your profile. This doesn't have to be anything crazy, but find something that represents you. For example, if you want to work with computers or you work with computers, have a picture of a circuit board or something related. Next to not having a profile picture, having the generic LinkedIn banner picture doesn't make you look good. Not only that, but when somebody actually visits your profile and you have both of these, you can tell pretty quickly what you're about. Just so we're clear what I'm talking about, this right here is the banner image and this is your profile picture. So these need to not be generic and they need to represent you. Question of the day, which of these mistakes from this video are you guilty of? What are you gonna do to change that? Let me know down in the comment section below. LinkedIn's a powerful platform where you can get a ton of value if you know how to use it correctly. Remember, I've learned these mistakes through my personal journey and through helping others get to where they wanna be. If you really wanna improve your LinkedIn profile and take it to the next level, head on over to my webpage and schedule a coaching session with me. We can dive deeper not only into these common mistakes, but other ones that we didn't mention in this video. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.